Good afternoon, Raiden and Kiwanis. Thank you very much for coming today. I'd like to call uh, Mr. Jay Ellis up to do our invocation. I was unsuccessful in securing a living cowboy prayer for today. So, uh, but in keeping with the theme, I wanted to encourage you with the words of Roy Rogers, who was once known as King of the Cowboys. Roy came up with 10 writer's rules that he encouraged all his fans and friends to live by. I wanted to share those with you. Number one, be neat and clean. Number two, be courteous and polite. Number three, always obey your parents. Number four, protect the weak and help them. Be brave, but never take chances. Study hard and learn all you can. Be kind to animals and take care of them. Eat all your food and never waste any. Love God and go to Sunday school regularly. Always respect our flag and our country. And he also composed this cowboy prayer. I'll share with us and listen to its words and see if that might be a prayer that each of us have today. Lord, I reckon I'm not much just by myself. I fail to do a lot of things I ought to do. But Lord, when trails are steep and passes high, help me ride it straight the whole way through. And when in the falling dusk I get that final call, I do not care how many flowers they send. Above all else, the happiest trail would be for you to say to me, let's ride, my friend. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right, join me in the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, and with liberty and justice for all. My country, tis of the sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing, land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrims' pride, from every mountain side, let freedom breathe. Thank you, you be seated. Enjoy your fellowship, and we'll start the program a little later. Thank you all for coming. I'd like to call up uh, Rita Smith uh, to do the introduction of our guest, please. Good afternoon, everyone. I guess when I call your name, please stand so we can give you a warm Kiwanis welcome. Our first guest is Joe DiFrancio, our guest of Joe. Hey. Um, okay. uh, David Sagnino, guest of Carol Whitmore. Hey, Dave. Uh, okay. Benita Gregory, guest of Dr. Price. Hey. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason Ellis, guest of Jay Ellis. Hey, Jason. Mm -hmm. uh, Charge Sniffin, guest of uh, Judge Nicholas. Okay. Uh, Sharon Price, guest of Rob and Misty Rich. Hey. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan Price, guest of Rob and Misty. Hey. Thank you. 
uh, Kathy Schott, guest of Chet Fratley. Uh, Gracie and Fred, Fred, Frederico, guests of Jet Smith. And Mr. Cornelius, a potential new member, guest of no one. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all for attending today and welcome. Okay. Thank you so much, Rita. I'd like to call up uh, Christy now with a community service update. Good morning, everyone. Um, one to share. We, who came to the Kids Against Hunger meal packing? Raise your hand. Thank you all so much. We packed all 25,000 meals in less than an hour and a half. Truly phenomenal. Thank you, everybody. Have a hand. However, our goal is 50,000. So we're doing it again on March 16th. Hope you all will come out. Same place, same time. All right? Hope to see you all. I um, also want to announce we need, two new pe we need two people to help with parking this Friday at the um, Pirates game. Signed You're signed up? Okay, so we need one more person. Please sign up for this. It all benefits Boys and Girls Club and is truly impactful for them. And I believe Mike is giving away some baseball tickets possibly if you come park. I have two, tickets. two tickets, so come on down. Ooh, that, that is a win for anybody who wants to do parking. There's a, there's also parking available on the 5th that we need people. Um, next thing, Sharon and her team for the Manatee Family River Kiwanis is doing a big event on the 9th. However, we need some people to come on the 2nd and help clean up this parking lot. We need some weed eating, um, picking up trash, helping with some mulch, things like that. See Sharon for more information, but our club can really support this event. And then on the 9th, we do have the Manatee Family River Kiwanis. Judge Nicholas has done a great plan, and he is bringing out the key leader kids to come help set up that whole group. But if you're around, please join them. Support our fellow Kiwanians. Is that good? That's great. All right, we'll see you on the 16th. Thank you. I'd like to call up uh, Mike Bear uh, to give us an update on membership. Thank you, Andy. Good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of the membership committee and Sharon Barhorst, who cheers that up, we've got a few new members, and um, I'd like to bring up to the stage um, three new members, three or four that we have here today. Uh, Joe Neaporte, would you come on up? I saw you over there. Come on up. Welcome, Joe, as a new member. So we don't have to call him out as a guest any longer, okay? Welcome. All right. Also, uh, yeah. Kurt Lanified. Lanified, come on up. Gene Brown was a sponsor. John Mullis, endorser. By the way, on Joe, I was the sponsor, and Mike McCoy was the endorser. Kurt, thank Welcome. you very much. Yes, sir. Um, Austin Martinez is not here today, and Ellen Yule, will you come up from the wait from the back? And we'll be a club satellite member from Avenue 941. Come on around. Andy, come on up. We're gonna, we'll get a picture. Welcome aboard. All right, let's Welcome. get a picture of everybody you. here. I'm going to slip in on the outside. In the middle, right? We'll surround you by orange jackets. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, you get in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right, uh, thank you very much. I uh, will call Neil Unruh to make an announcement about the next week's uh, uh, Kiwanis Day at the ballpark. All right, once again, no meeting here next week. We will be, those of you who have signed up, uh, we will be out at the ball field. Uh, the gates open at 1130. Your tickets will be at will call. The food will be arriving at noon up in the Lipinski area. So that will be available from 12 to 2. Uh, we have right around 55 or so. We are shutting down registration at the end of the meeting. So around 1 to 115. So uh, it's kind of see Mac or me right after the meeting if you're going to. 
um, sign up. This is the last day. We will not take any more. The Pirates have to have the ability to uh, get everything organized on their end and get paid for this event. Uh, it'll be a great event. And then I'll just do one more thing. Um, Hitchhiker Series, for those who have been following, it will be ending this Saturday. Um, my mom is heading back home. Um, it's been a great pleasure to have her here for five weeks. Um, and it's been a great pleasure to share her adventures with everybody out there in social media land. Thank you. Always. Um, again, cash I take all the time. I will not mark you as paid. Um, <laughs> but those who have not paid are, do not, you do not pay at will call. You'll come in and we will be there at the Lipinci area to collect any monies that have not been paid up to this point. Most everybody in our club has paid. Not everybody, but most everybody, most of its inner club folks. Who will, they, who will be paying on site. And it's gonna be a great inter club event. We got a lot of three or four different clubs are bringing multiple people to the event. So it'll be a, a great time to get to know other people in other clubs here in our division. Awesome. Thank you very much, Neil. I really appreciate you organizing that. Thank you, Neil. All right, uh, for our speaker today, I'd like to introduce uh, Judge Terry Dees. Uh, Terry can come up and introduce uh, our speaker today. I am not your speaker today. I don't have enough cowboy garb on to be your speaker today. But my name is Terry Kaklistes. I've been a member here for a year, year and a half. It's my honor uh, to introduce my friend and my colleague, Judge Don Hall. Um, Don is the president of the rodeo out in Arcadia, which is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, east of the Mississippi? We got the whole east coast? OK, so that's a really big thing. Um, my family has known Don's family for a number of years, too many to count, because that would tell me and tell him how old we both are. And I would also tell you how long he's been a judge, many decades, and he's a great judge. But he's a cowboy at heart. Um, he and his family have been uh, part of Florida and part of Florida cattle ranching for a number of decades. Not only is he a great friend, a great judge, but he's just an amazing supporter of the rodeo <clears throat> and all Florida has to offer as far as those things go. I think his entire family, not in, I mean, I'm count dad, grandpa, uncles, brothers, wife, daughter, son, they're all lawyers, but they're all cattle people at heart. <clears throat> you can never accuse Don of being all hat, no cow. Uh, he, he's, he's the real deal. He's passionate about the growth and success of the Arcadia Rodeo. He's been that way since I've known him. And we have an extra special uh, guest here because Don has brought with him Mr. Greg Simus, who is a professional announcer on the rodeo circuit, if you will. I think he only hits the big time ones. And so we're really lucky to have them both. And I hope you guys give everybody, uh, or everyone gives them a warm welcome to Manatee County. So welcome. <laughs> All right, good afternoon. And I want to tell you how much we appreciate it, both Greg and myself, <coughs> that you would let us have this particular time because it happens to be the perfect timing for us to promote this uh, rodeo that we're going to talk to you about today. It happens to be next week. So my first order of business, since I can do this, is to order each and every one of you to come. So, <laughs> I have that opportunity, and I do have the sign-up list that you signed up outside, and I will be checking that list <laughs> next week. So be sure and make sure that you are in attendance. Look, in just a minute, I'm going to let Greg tell you a little bit more about our rodeo because he has a kind of an outside picture of it. I mean, I like to brag on it, and I brag on it all the time, but what I really want to do is tell you a little bit about our organization and to kind of get you to buy into it a little bit. Because what I usually hear is that once you see one rodeo, you've seen them all. And I can't tell you that there's, that's so far from the truth, it's not even funny. But the thing about it is, is that we're a nonprofit organization, just like this. 
And there's some other people I see a lot of familiar faces in here that have been to the rodeo and they can tell you kind of what we do. We have two full-time employees and about 60 members. And what happened is here recently we've moved into a new facility and boy has that ever brought on some interesting uh, opportunities for us to get in trouble. Because I'm telling you, none of us ever dreamed what it would be like to move into a brand new 8,000 seat facility. It's still an outdoor facility, but it does have a roof, and we do way more than rodeos now. We do lots of events. As a matter of fact, this past weekend, we had what I consider I'm very proud of is a junior rodeo organization in which we have many youth from all around Florida come six times a year. And there's uh, 200 of those people that participate, and that's the next generation. So we plan on keeping uh, this rodeo is 96 years old. If you can imagine, 96 years, and we only, we've only moved twice. This is the th uh, third time that we've moved in this new facility. But if you can imagine that this actually has been around 96 years. Now, it, didn't all, it was not always the way it is now, obviously. Uh, now it's a professional organization that uh, comes in and helps us put on the rodeo. But before that, it was all Florida Championship Rodeo where it was the ranches. And that's how it started out. Ranchers would come in on the weekends. They wanted to get off the uh, ranch and do something fun, something different. And they'd come in and they'd compete uh, several times a year. And that's how it all got started. But uh, some of the interesting things that we've gone through is that we first started out, of course, we had the pandemic. We survived that, and interesting thing about that is we were the last, uh, second to the last event to stay open in the state of Florida and in the country, really. And we had a big decision to make, either stay open, we already had, and you can ask Greg, we already had all the livestock here, all the cowboys were down here and the cowgirls, the whole deal was set up and ready to go when it hit us. It hit us on that same weekend, if you remember. And what ended up happening was is that we had to make a decision, stay open or close. It just so happens that Disney World said, we're going to close on Sunday. Well, that's the last day of our event. I said, aha, we're going to stay open until Sunday. So it worked out pretty good for us, and we were able to get through it. I was expecting Peter Jennings or one of those guys to show up and say, what are you doing open? You know, so, well, we'll be ready for you if you want to. But anyhow, and then after that, of course, the hurricane hit. There is some damage to our facility. We're dealing with that now, but we're trying to keep it together. It is nonprofit, and again, 96 years old, and we do way more than just a rodeo, but our big event is this rodeo, and I want Greg to talk about it because I can tell you he has a good passion for it, and, and I'm just glad he would come with me today. Greg, thank you very much. Man. Nobody told me about the traffic when he told me to come, but no. So 64, that was a joy. Um, now, first off, thank you all so much for having us here today. And, and I'm fortunate enough to call this, you know, this is my 11th year. You know, I remember 2014 in the old arena down off of 17, and now the move into the Mosaic arena. We made that move in 2018. And I say we. I've become part of the family. I, I truly feel passionate about DeSoto County, passionate about Arcadia, and, of course, the rodeo. Uh, about myself, I, uh, I travel the country. I've been fortunate to be invited to Australia three times. I've worked in seven Canadian provinces um, and I've, in over 35 states. I, I've held the microphone announcing Western sports. It, it's People ask, you know, what's great about your job? Well, I'm just like each and every one of you in this room or those that will attend the rodeo over the 25,000 people that will be in Arcadia next week. I'm a fan. Um, I'm a fan of the competition, at athleticism of each and every one of the competitors. That'll be there. Over 400 competitors have entered that rodeo spanning the globe from Australia uh, to Canada. And, and I think there's contestants from over 35 states that'll be in Arcadia next week. But I'm a fan of what they do, but I, I'm more of a fan of the Western industry and the Western way of life. Uh, it's slowly fading away in parts of this country in places like DeSoto County and the Arcadia All Florida Championship Rodeo keep that heritage alive. So it, I'm so passionate about being a part of it. Uh, the rodeo you'll see next week, for those of you that attend, it, you know, like what was said, is the largest rodeo east of the Mississippi. What that means, it's the largest payout. And these contestants, the rodeo season begins October 1st. 
uh, each year. So for 2024, we began October 1st, 2023, and the contestants are trying to gather as much money as they can. We, they call it points, but every dollar is a point. So they, they gather as much money as they can to try to qualify to the Super Bowl of our industry, which is held in Las Vegas. It's called the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo. That's held every December for 10 straight nights where there's over $15 million up for grabs for those cowboys and cowgirls. Unlike other professional rodeo athletes, if they stub their toe, they hurt their back, they sit at home, they don't get paid. There, there is no turf toe in rodeo. Um, they, they have to compete. I mean, I've seen team ropers at the end of the season with a cast on their leg still competing to try to qualify because that's how they feed their family. That's how they pay their bills. And a lot of times these contestants will travel from places from Florida to Washington State to try to just be a part of that top 15 of their, their perspective event and because ultimately you make your money in Las Vegas and only 15 in each event have that opportunity to do so. Uh, from the contestants that'll be at this rodeo next week, they're off quick count. I think there's seven world champions that'll be here. There are number one contestants in the world. We have, there's an 18 year old phenom. I'm bragging on him wherever I go right now uh, by the name of Wacy Shala. He's entered in two events. His mom called me, he, got, he turned 18 on November 1st uh, of last year. And the kid graduated high school early just to be a professional rodeo athlete. He's entered in the bareback riding and the bull riding at the rodeo next week, and, and, and just remember that name. He's the number one all-around rookie in rodeo right now, and like I said, I mean, just turned 18 years old. So it's an impressive story, but with that story, there's so many more. Uh, the rodeo in Arcadia is the first rodeo, major rodeo, east of the Mississippi to add breakaway roping, which is a second event for the ladies. Um, the ladies used to only compete in barrel racing at most professional rodeos. Um, and then breakaway roping got introduced, and it's been around forever. It didn't just get introduced, but it started to become part of our format at major rodeos. Arlington, Texas, the American, was the first major rodeo to hold it. And a lot of other rodeos started to bring the ladies in in the roping event. Uh, and they'd give them a little bit. They wouldn't be equal money to the other events. They, you know, we, we would give them a couple thousand dollars. Well, when the Arcadia All Florida Championship Rodeo decided to have breakaway roping, there was no dipping your toes in the water. They went full speed ahead and then they, they added the same amount of money for the ladies in the breakaway roping as they did any other event. Last year, we were, we were at $10,000 per event. And when I say that, that's added per event. And then you take the entry fees and you take everything else. That's what those contestants compete for. And uh, they went 10,000 for the ladies this year. They've upped their money to 12,500. Next Sunday on March 10th, we'll pay out in excess of a quarter million dollars at the Arcadia Rodeo for these contestants. And, and that's just because of the hard work of, of the committee and so much more. But it's an incredible rodeo. It's a highlight on my calendar each and every year. My family gets to come with me where they don't get to travel with me too, too terribly much. And you know, I was asked where I stay and, and we stay in our horse trailer. Our horse trailer has a 16 foot living quarters in it, just like anybody's camper. And we haul our three horses. My wife is a contestant. She'll be competing next Saturday. So um, eight different pro rodeo events and the absolute best in the world of professional rodeo will be in DeSoto County next week. So we encourage each and every one of you to come on out. And are there any questions or anything I missed, Judge? Oh, I get put on the spot all the time. You know, my favorite event is probably what we refer to as the classic event in professional rodeo, and that's saddle bronc riding. <clears throat> it's probably the toughest event to learn, but once you learn it, it's, it's like Fred Astaire and Ginger. It's, it's, a, it's poetry in motion. It's, it's a, you, you have a dancing partner. Um, and so I, I like the saddle bronc riding. I like tie down roping. I like them all, but I, I truly, before you could do any other event in professional rodeo, you needed to have a horse to ride. And so that, that's where that event came from. You, you break the horse to ride. So saddle bronc riding is definitely a classic. And, and I'm glad you touched on that too, because there's so many events, team roping and tie down roping, even steer wrestling. The events in rodeo are derived from an actual working ranch out West. I mean, you needed to do these daily tasks in order to doctor your cattle, you know, and tend to an injury, whatever the case may be. And if you're out on a couple thousand acre ranch by yourself, you know, a lot of people look at calf roping, oh, that could be cruel or what no it's not it's it's really not those calves work maybe one or two days a month in all technicalities so but that's where the events come from just like saddle bronc riding now the bull riding that wasn't that wasn't necessary that was that was just a bravado you know who's who's who had the toughest cowboy on the ranch and so you know that definitely wasn't necessary but the lives yeah exactly <laughs> The livestock that'll be, and, and, and Judge touched on it briefly, but 
the livestock you have coming for this rodeo. And that's, you know, he told you how the rodeo got started with local Florida ranches competing against one another. This is the only major rodeo in the Sunshine State. And I just came from Kissimmee and I'll brag on the Silver Spurs every chance I get. But what separates this rodeo apart is they bring in the premier stock contractor in the world. They're from Oklahoma, Freedom, Oklahoma. Uh, Frontier Rodeo Company is now nine times, nine times in a row, they've been nominated as uh, the Stock Contractor of the Year in Professional Rodeo, and that comes with a hefty bonus every year on the stage in Las Vegas. So he, Stuart, and Jerry Nelson will be here, you know, with their award-winning livestock. We've seen horses like Full Baggage Maple Leaf and four-time world champion bucking horse Medicine Woman has been to your rodeo. We almost broke an arena record at the old arena record where the, the world champion Spencer Wright was 92 points out of a possible 100 on, on Medicine Woman. So that goes back to the saddle bronc riding, just legendary bucking horses that'll be here next week. Yes, sir. What's the average weight of the bulls? The bulls probably weigh on an average of, uh, if I had to guess, probably about 1,500, 1,500 pounds, 1,600. There's, there's some smaller ones, 12, 13. They can eclipse a ton of fun, 2,000 pounds. So, uh, but the, the athleticism of the bulls is, is something to watch as well. And they're not just, you know, they've taken raising livestock to a whole nother level. I mean, they're athletes. They get, they get ran just like your, your youngsters that might compete in sports or the local pirates organization. They exercise. These stock contractors exercise their livestock. When they arrive here after a long uh, trailer ride next week, they'll get off, they'll rest for a little bit, but then they'll get shown the arena, the mosaic arena, and they'll get you know, ran around. They'll get shown how to come in and out. But, but these animals are athletes, and, and they've taken it to a whole, just like thoroughbreds on the track. They're, they're born to do one thing, and one thing only. Yes, sir. How much training do the clowns have to go through before they can get out? <laughs> well, it's funny you ask that. What are y'all doing next week? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> so the so that, and that's the thing. So back in the day of rodeo, the clown was also the bullfighter. He also protected the cowboys that rode the bull, and we called them clowns. So the evolution of that profession nowadays, the athletes that are your professional bullfighters. So we, we refer to them as bullfighters now. And then you also have a clown, and the clown you have here will tell you right now he will run pretty fast to get away from one. So he's there strictly for entertainment. But, uh, you know, just like everything else, I mean, you can look at – Golf and, and what they've done with the physical fitness in golf. I mean, not everybody has a, a walrus. Anybody who remembers golf, you know, you had Craig Statler, you know, the walrus, and he was built like one. But nowadays, the physical fitness has really played an integral part in everything we do. So the, the professional bullfighters that are here, I mean, they're athletes. I mean, they train constantly. There's schools that they go to uh, to learn how to be a per better protection athlete is what we call them. Uh, so... You have a young man actually will be fighting bulls. He's, he's born and raised in DeSoto County. Riley McKetrick uh, has worked his way into that level. He started out as a, a fighting bulls for high school rodeo here in Florida for the, the AYRA, the, the Arcadia Youth Rodeo Association there. And he's worked his way and got his card and, and finally worked his way into a position of fighting his hometown rodeo that he grew up watching. So, But it's a lot of training. He's been to Las Vegas for bullfights out there. It's nonstop. I and mean, it's just like anything else. If you, if you let your body get complacent, you're going to get yourself hurt. So the bullfighters are, are phenomenal athletes. And um, and to separate that to your clown, the clown you have coming in, and I wanted to touch on that too, is the clown coming this year. He's been here before. He was here in 2019, 20, and 21, and he's back again this year. And the last two years, he's accomplished what we call the trifecta in, in awards. So you have the absolute best entertainer in professional rodeo. He won the, the comedy act of the year, so his act is – can't wait for y'all to see it. He didn't have it when he was here last time. I can't wait for you to see it as well. So he's got an incredible comedy act. He won that award in Las Vegas. He won what we call the Coors Man in the Can, which is a protection in the barrel. And then he also the PRCA Clown of the Year. And he's won that trifecta the last two years. So he'll be here as, a, as a, your clown. And then we also have a gentleman by the name of Bobby Kerr in the Mustang Act. And you can Google it. This man is phenomenal animal trainer. So he has three Mustangs that he rescued from ranges out west that were wild. He's trained them to ride. He's trained them to do tricks in the arena. And he has three Border Collie dogs. And it's just an incredible act. I, I can't wait for you all to see it. So, What's the most common injury? Oh, goodness. And, and that's, so that's going to go event by event. Because you're using different, each event might have a, a you know a common injury in it. Um, 
bull riding, they don't start with any brain, so therefore head injuries are... So, I, I say that. that I, I, I say that, but I, I got on a few myself, and I hold the microphone now, so I'm the smartest bull rider in the room. But um, common, I'll be honest with you, groin injuries, to be honest, because um, the, the bull riders, the, the, the inside of their leg takes a lot of abuse trying to stay... When you, when you have 1,500 pounds underneath and you weigh 135, you use your legs a lot. So uh, a groin injury, calf rope or groin injuries because of the way they dismount their horse. That horse is going 30 miles an hour when they dismount that horse. And so one leg hits the ground, the other one's still in the saddle. And if you don't get your timing just right, uh, groin injuries have probably the most prominent if I, if I had to throw out an injury. But in the, you know, any event, shoulder injuries in the, in the rough stock events are, are big. But um, it's, a, it's a who's who when it comes to an x-ray, when it comes to a rodeo athlete. So. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, yeah. yeah. If you're planning on uh, coming Saturday, uh, you plan on sitting outside because <laughs> that uh, day is pretty much sold out. But the rest of the time, it'll be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, all at 2 o'clock. And what I wanted to say before I stepped down is there's a lot of construction in Arcadia. So if you, and even, I'll tell you, it's hard to get there even if there's not construction. So I can tell you that right now. But what you want to do is leave early. I mean, really early, because I know some of you are coming. And if you wait until, like, like we did today, try to get over here in an hour, you just about forget it. You will not get to the rodeo grounds, and you miss half the show. So it's really important if you want to come. And tailgating is huge now. It's a big thing over there, and I think, you know, the rodeo lasts about an hour and 45 minutes. It's not that long. It's nice. It goes really fast. That's what we like about it. It's exciting and very fast-paced. It's kind of like hockey. So if you think about that, you're kind of thinking along the same lines. So remember, if you want to come, please leave early, or you will not get in the gate because you'll be stuck in traffic, and, you know, and the people that come over, and matter of fact, uh, Judge Dees has a, a set up over there where they uh, entertain some people, and so you all might be invited. I don't know. Let's all meet there. Be right over here. So I'm just kidding you, but uh, anyhow. So, but we would love to have you, and we really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. And we'd love to answer any more questions. We'll be around for a little bit, and it's been my pleasure. Thank you. All right, as, a, as Kiwanis tradition, we have our, our coveted golden ruler uh -uh. to measure your future success by. So appreciate Great. you guys Thank coming. You. Thank, Thank you very, you very much. much for a quick picture. You bet. We have some tickets to give away, too. Right. Oh, you do? Hats, so I don't know how you... Got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, well, hey, well, hey, we'll stand up here then. Thank uh, you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, so you already gave it away. I was going to ask the 96 years. So you well, hold on, hold on a second. So apparently there's there's tickets and hats to give away. Yeah, we got uh, one set of four tickets all together. No, one for Saturday, four. one for Sunday. Okay. Four so for Saturday, four for Sunday. Four, two sets. Okay, great. Four for Saturday, which is impossible. And a couple of ball caps. And a couple of ball caps. So. Okay. Um, let's see. How do how do you want to give them away? <laughs> okay. For the four tickets on Saturday, I think we can get one good question if you're listening. Okay. And that would be, how old is this rodeo? Oh. She got it first. Uh, she got it first. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, I think the other question was, um, he did name the largest bull we've ever had. What was the name of the 2,000-pound bull that rode at the rodeo? Who said it first? Mike, Mike McCoy. So it's Sunday tickets to Mike McCoy. <laughs> all right, there you go. All right, and uh, uh, how many ball caps do you have? Two. Two. Two ball caps. All right. Um, let's see, Judge, do you have a question? Any history? Uh, oh, I got it. Which, which club sponsored to create the road between here and Arcadia? <laughs> oh, the Brady and the Kiwanis did. Hey, Matt got a hat right there. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Um, what's another good question? Um, how many how many um, uh, places is Judge D's going to have available at her trailer this Saturday morning? 
Six. Henry Lawrence said six. Henry Lawrence wins the hat right there. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks thank you very you. much. Thank thanks, guys. All right. Uh, one last fun thing before we go. Uh, the Key Leader Weekend is also next weekend, and we've got 51 kids coming to Key Leader, uh, which is huge. Um, so it's also uh, so we need we do need some chaperone uh, help. So if you are interested in being a chaperone for that event, come see uh, Judge Nicholas after here. And I just want to thank you all for coming today. Remember, no meeting here next week. We'll be at the ballpark. It's going to be fantastic. So the weather's going to be great. So uh, thank you very much for coming. You, we're adjourned. <laughs>